This is the day the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. And it's a what? It's a good day to die to yourself. Glory to God. That it is, isn't it? How many of y'all know we're in the last days? Jesus is coming soon. And we got to be ready. I'm telling you, ready. Turn to Ephesians 6. Ephesians chapter 6. You know, as we continue to see what's going on in the world, everything is falling into prophetic scripture that was spoken about thousands of years ago. Isn't that amazing? Israel becoming a nation, Jerusalem becoming its capital. All kinds of things that are happening right now, which is phenomenal. Phenomenal. It's an honor to be alive right now. I truly believe that we are the generation to see the return of the Lord. In Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 10, would you read it with me, please? Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might, not your own. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be what? Able to stand against the wiles of the devil or the trickery. You know how many people don't even believe in the devil? It's because they have them. It says in verse 12, For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. In other words, you are not fighting against flesh and blood. You are fighting against powers of darkness. And I am here to tell you as an eyewitness of a a visitation from the Lord, and one of the things that the Lord shared with me is that His Bible is true. Because I never believed it. I was out there doing whatever I wanted to do. And I'm telling you, his Bible is true. I didn't hear it from a man. I heard it from God. Okay? So, in other words, I want you to really truly understand that what is written in this word is true. It's not a fake. It's not written by a man. The Holy Spirit used a man and spoke through him to write it. How many of you know God can use anybody? If he can use me, he can use anybody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. (laughs) In verse 13, therefore what? Take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. How many of y'all know we're in the evil days? Come on, we all know things aren't getting any better, are they? They're getting worse. You're seeing more rape, more murders, more stealing, even in more corruption in the corporations, more corruption in government. I mean, you know, people are putting their trust in government. Boy, are they deceived. Things are not getting better and they're not going to get better. They may have a, a form or a sense of getting better, but they will never get better. It just ain't going to happen until the day Jesus touches this earth. That's when the Prince of Peace will come and things will get better. So what is he saying? Listen, you must arm yourself. And that's what I want to talk about arming yourself today. And it is important that you arm yourself Arming yourself. Arming yourself. I mean, I'm talking about, that's what he says, talk about put the full armor of God on. What are you doing? You're arming yourself so that you can combat the powers of darkness. Arming yourself. All right, go to verse 14. This is how you arm yourself. First of all, he says it's about putting on the whole armor of God. Now he explains the whole armor of God, and I'm not going to get fully into this, but I'm just going to mention it, okay? Number seven means complete and perfect. There are seven parts of the armor of God. It's amazing that everybody skips number seven, but they tell you the first six. But I'm going to tell you the seventh one. In verse 13, therefore take up the what? Homer of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Stand therefore having girded yourself with the what? Waste with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness. So first of all, we see it's the waist or the belt of truth, right? See, if you, know, if you don't have a belt on and, and your pants fall down, you fall over, don't you? Right? Did you ever see everybody running around trying to hold their pants up? It's because they ain't got truth. I don't know how they outrun the police. They can't. It's impossible. I see these guys trying to run like this. I'm thinking, man, you'll never outrun the police and you ain't going to jump that fence. You must have surrender or rip off those shorts quickly. I know in my days I would have never worn those kind of shorts. <laughs> I knew I couldn't outrun the police. <laughs> Therefore, what we're going to do, put on the belt of truth and the breastplate of what? Righteousness. 
in verse 15, and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace, and above all, taking the what? Shield of faith, which is able to quench every fiery dart from the wicked one, and the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Okay, so we got six of them right there. We've got truth, righteousness, gospel of peace. We've got uh, shield of faith. We've got the uh, helmet of salvation and the sword of spirit. That's six. Now, here's the seventh one. Are you ready? And verse 18, always praying, always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. That means praying in tongues. See, most people don't talk about the seventh one because they ain't been baptized in the Holy Ghost. That happens when you get baptized in the Holy Spirit and you have power and the scales come off of your eyes and you're able to see hear and do other things that normal man can't do are you hearing that's what separates the religiosity from the relationship are you hearing so these are seven areas seven parts that we are to arm ourselves now this is a interior preparation with an outward result Has everybody got it this is an interior inside preparation with an outward result isn't it because you're actually arming yourself. Now, you're arming yourself from the world, from your old self, from attacks of the devil or Satan's kingdom. Those are the main areas that you're arming yourself from. From the world. Who's the ruler of this world? Satan. You're arming yourself from your old self, right? So you can maintain your new creation. And the attacks from Satan's kingdom. Does everybody get it? Go to First Peter 4. First Peter chapter 4. So if you're not putting your full armor of God on, you're going out naked. Are you hearing me? You must arm yourself. And how do you arm yourself? You go to the Lord because you got to take time in prayer every morning. You go to the Lord and you ask him, Lord, please dress me with your full armor. Then you speak it. Dress me with the truth, with righteousness, peace, joy, faith, sword of spirit, cloak of humility, armor of light, divine nature, your character. I mean, just surrender and empty yourself. Just like you're taking out your piggy bank and you're going to empty it all out. You're going to empty out your piggy bank. You. And get filled and get dressed with him every morning. Arming yourself. And First Peter chapter 4, is everybody there? First three verses, would you read it with me? Therefore... Since Christ suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves also with the same mind. For he who has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin. That he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh for the loss of men, but for the will of God. For we have spent enough of our past lifetime as idiots in doing the will of the Gentiles... When we walked in a lewdness, lust, drunkenness, revelries, drinking parties, and abomination, and abominable idolatries, drug abuse, fornication, stealing, lying, manipulating. Hello, the list goes on. Everybody got it? We've lived long enough in the world doing this. Jealousy, rage, fear. All of those things are associated with the world. See, you, you and I are to arm ourselves, not only with the armor of God, but with the mind of Christ. So you arm yourselves what? Arming yourself with the mind of Christ. In other words, his image, likeness, character, authority. I'll repeat it. With his image, likeness, character, authority, and anointing. You got it? Arming yourselves with the mind of Christ. In other words, his purposes, his thoughts. With his image and likeness, his character, authority, and anointing. Why? So you can overcome and conquer. Everybody say overcome, overcome. And, conquer. and conquer. Overcome, overcome. And, conquer. and conquer. Not be overcome, okay? But overcome. Good. Romans 8. <laughs> Romans 8 and verse 37. Romans 8, verse 37. Is everybody there? Yet in 
all things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. So it says that we are more than conquerors. A more than a conqueror. To be more than a conqueror means that someone had to already come and conquer. Are you hearing? It means if you have to be, if you're more than a conqueror, it means somebody already had to come and conquer already. So if somebody already came to conquer already, which we know who that is, right? That means somebody came to conquer, went before us. Now we step in the place of what was conquered. And we maintain the position that was conquered and fortify it. In other words, you maintain the position and fortify it. So every area that the God, Jesus, when he came into the world that he conquered, you step in and maintain the position of the place that was conquered. That makes you more than a conqueror. Are you hearing me? Now, it's our responsibility to maintain those areas that have been conquered. So we're to maintain the position and fortify it. All those places. We are holding fast in his love in every area. We are holding fast in his love. So every area that has been conquered, he conquered it with his love. Boy, he kicks butt with love, don't he? Casts out devils because he loves. I mean, he heals the sick because he loves. Exposes the devil because he loves. And died on the cross because he loves. So there are areas that we must maintain the areas that have been conquered. Even in places and position. Where you're at right now. You used to struggle with fear, right? Well, he conquered it already. You used to struggle with addiction. He conquered it already. Now you must step in and become more than a conqueror and learn how to maintain, hello, and fortify that place so you never go back into it. You're protecting it now. Are you hearing? You're protecting it. And you're doing it. You're maintaining it. You're protecting it. You're fortifying it. Because you are more than a conqueror. How are you doing it? By arming yourselves. With the armor of God. With the mind of Christ, with the love of Christ, you are arming yourself now. Now you're knowing how to fight. No more running. Weenies run. Wimps run. Warriors fight. 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 You know how many times we've changed relationships, locations, and everything else. And the devil always caught up and kicked our butt. Uh, you tried another drug. You tried another drink. You tried another relationship. Never worked. Right? Never worked. It always fell. Because you never conquered. You got to turn around and fight the devil face to face. Or you'll always lose. I don't care how many programs. I don't care how long. One thing you hate to do is get into demon management. I ain't managing no demons in my life. I'm kicking them out. Hello? That's a conqueror. We are more than conquerors. Jesus already did it for us. Now we just have to maintain those places. Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 1. In verse 15, Paul writes, Therefore, I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints, do not cease to give thanks for you making mention of you in my prayers. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of what? Wisdom and what? Wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Him. That's another area where we must arm ourselves. In the spirit of wisdom and revelation. Now, revelation allows you to see and wisdom allows you to do. Revelation allows you to see and wisdom allows you to do. Why? Because when you see, then you're told what to do by spirit of wisdom. You got it? In verse 18. That the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling, what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power toward us, who believe according to the working of his mighty power, which he worked in Christ, when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this age, 
but also in that which is to come. Hallelujah. So we see we must arm ourselves with the spirit of wisdom and the spirit of revelation. Again, revelation allows you to see and wisdom allows you to do because he's going to direct you what to do. That's another area where we must arm ourselves. Are you hearing me? Go to John 16. John 16. Arming yourself, your new self. You want to disarm the old self, don't you? Arming yourself. In verse 33, John 16, 33, somewhere around there. Is everybody there? Would you read it with me? These things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have what? In the world you will have what? Tribulation. Tribulation. But be of good cheer, I have what? I have overcome the world. In other words, I have conquered. So if you're following in his steps, if you're doing what he's asked you to do, you will always overcome. See, he's already overcome the world, hasn't he? He came, he overcame, he conquered. In other words, he deprived the world's power to harm you. He deprived the world's power to harm you. Are you getting it? What did he do? He deprived the world's power to harm you. Now, who's the ruler of the world? Satan. So he's already disarmed them, didn't he? Then why does he still harm people? Because people are not arming themselves. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. They're not using what God had given them. Remember, Jesus said, come to me, you who labor and heavy laden and burden. And he said, learn from me, because either you'll learn or you'll burn. So we've got to learn how to become more than conquerors. We've got to arm ourselves continuously every single day. It's not a one-time event. And John 15, and verse 19. John 15 and verse 19. Is everybody there? Would you read it now? If you were of the world, the world would love its own. Yet because you are not of the world, but I chose you out of the world, therefore the world what? Hates you. So you are not of the world. And one of the things the enemy wants you to do is to compromise so that you're part of the world. Little bits, little bits here and there begins to compromise. You get complacent, you get lazy. And the next thing you know, one toe goes in the world, the next toe, then their whole foot, next toe, man, you're gone. Remember when Jesus told Peter, he said, listen, let me wash your feet. And Peter said, what do you mean my feet? You ain't washing my feet. Let me wash yours. Peter didn't get it. This is what he was talking about. Jesus said, listen, you ain't going to make it if you don't let me wash your feet. He said, well, then wash my whole body. <laughs> you know, Peter. But this is what he's talking about. See, you put one toe in the world. Next thing you know, you're, all your toes. The next thing, your foot's in the world. Next thing, you're in the world. But you've been called out of the world. That's why we must arm ourselves. Are you getting it? We must arm ourselves. The world is a representation of this realm. Why? You do not belong in this realm. We don't belong here. This is not our home. This is a fallen realm right now. And one day it's all going to get burned up and cooked up and it's going to be gone. The realm in our home it does, is not here. We belong in another realm. You are spirits in a flesh suit. The flesh will go back to where it belongs and God's got a brand new body waiting for you. So one thing we want to do is constantly arm ourselves so it won't fall back into the world. Because then we'll be judged according to the unbeliever. We are to overcome and conquer. Now, there are seven things I want to tell you what we need to overcome and conquer. You ready? Seven is complete and perfect. Self. In other words, your flesh. Self is associated with flesh. It's associated with the old man. That's the first thing that... This is why we're arming ourselves. Overcome self in the flesh. Are you hearing me? The second thing is sin and ungodly desires. The third thing that we're overcoming and conquering is our past with regret and unforgiveness. That's why you're arming yourself. The fourth thing is fear. You're Overcoming fear, control, and anxiousness. Fear, control, and anxiousness. Am I going too fast? 
And you don't take shorthand? <laughs> Just bring your arm a little closer to you. <laughs> Do I need to repeat them? I will in a minute. The fifth one. Unbelief and doubt. The sixth one. The cares of this world, lust of money, and fame. We're here not to promote ourselves. We're here to promote Christ. Cares of this world, lust of money, and fame. And the seventh one, Satan in his Satan's kingdom, demons, demonic forces. Satan's kingdom, demons and demonic forces. I'll repeat them. The first one is self and flesh, sin and ungodly desires. Actually, that's a representation of overcoming your soul. That's why your soul must be renewed. Your soul never shuts up. It's like a big antenna out there. Beep, 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 beep. It, fix, it catches every kind of voice that's out there. It's always trying to promote self. Me, 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 me. Almost like the roadrunner, you know? That's probably why they got internet roadrunner, huh? Me, me, me. Pew. Anxious thing, isn't he? The third one is past. Your past. Regret and unforgiveness. The fourth one is fear, control, and anxiousness. Fear, control, and anxiousness. The fifth one is unbelief and doubt. The sixth one, the cares of this world, lust of money and fame. Well, what do you want to do in life? I just want to be rich. Well, you're an idiot. Verse 7, uh, the seven one. Satan's kingdom and his demons. See, this is how the devil snares us in these areas, doesn't he? So you're arming yourself to constantly conquer and overcome those things. Listen, you can be wealthy. There's nothing wrong with being wealthy. God wants us to prosper. But the Bible says the love of money is the root of every stinking devil in hell. So we don't labor for money. We labor unto the Lord and he blesses your socks off. Now, there are eight divine promises to those who conquer. Are you ready? Eight meaning new beginnings. Seven is complete and perfect. See, so if you're able to overcome these and conquer these areas, these seven things, because it means complete, then there are divine promises or rewards for being conquerors. In Revelation chapter 2. And we'll just buzz right through this stuff. In verse 7, the first one. Are you with me? Revelation 2. It's just for you. The first one, Revelation 2, 7. Let's read it. And he who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To him who overcomes, I will give to eat from the tree of life, which is in the midst of paradise of God. So he's going to allow you to eat of the tree of life. Eight divine promises to those who overcome. The second one is in verse 11. And he who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. And he who overcomes shall not be hurt by the second death. That is the lake of fire. That is the lake of fire that burns. It's called hell. You know, everybody's name is in the book of life when you're born. The day that you let your last breath out is whether your name stays in or is removed. So who you serve when you die is where you go. But I accepted Jesus 30 years ago. It doesn't matter who you serve when you die is where you go. That once saved, always saved is a bunch of garbage. Far be it that my father paid the price on the cross and we go out and serve the devil and think we're okay. You know how many people have overdosed and went to hell? Think about it. Why are we still alive? Somebody's praying for us. Somebody's praying for us because many of us should be in hell. Well, we all should be in hell. <laughs> but he rescued us. And for that, you know, the other day I was saying to the Lord, Lord, I've got nothing to repay you with. 
I, I, I've got nothing to repay you with for what you've done for me. I, 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 I don't know how to repay you. The only thing I can do is give you this life, but you got to do whatever you got to do with this life because I've got nothing to repay you with. And I felt so bad I had nothing to repay him with. But he shared with me, it's already been paid. <laughs> you don't have to repay me. Just live for me. Live for me and remember that this is in your home. Remember your home is with me, not here. No matter what's going on in your life, no matter what's happening around you, or no matter how you're being enticed, no matter what your trials, your tribulations, no matter what's going on in your life, I'm greater. And I've made the way for you to be a conqueror. More than a conqueror. No matter what's going on in your life, remember that the life that's waiting for you is much greater. Much greater. Everybody okay? So the second one is you won't be hurt in a second death at the lake of fire. The third one is in uh, verse 17. And he who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To him who overcomes, I will give some of the hidden manna to eat. And I'll give him white stone and on the stone a what? New name written which no one knows except him who receives it. So you're going to get hidden manna and a new name. Hidden manna and a new name. Man, when I was young, I wanted a new name right away. I was one of the only Italians in my class. And I had to come in this class that everybody was named John, Peter, this, and I was Gaetano. So I got the nickname Tonto. <laughs> man, I wanted a new name. <laughs> I said, Lord, man, this is crazy. I mean, I didn't say God. I went home and crawled. Oh, man, you know, I was a little kid. Then they changed it to Guy. They should have left Gay Tonto. But anyways. Hallelujah. Is everybody okay? So you're going to what? Eat the hidden manna and get a new name. In verse 26. Is everybody there? And he who overcomes and keeps my works until the end. To him I will give what? Power over the nations. He shall rule them with a rod of iron. They shall be dashed to pieces like the potter's vessels. In other words, you are going to rule with Christ. You will give him power over the nations. You will rule with him. And the fifth one is in 3.5. Chapter 3, verse 5. And he who overcomes will be clothed in white garments. Yes. He will be clothed in white garments and I will not blot out his name from the book of life. And I will confess his name before my father and before the angels. You see that? Your name won't be blotted out if you overcome. Listen, I'm not saying this. The word said this. The word is true and my dad told me so. In verse 12. And he overcomes, and I will make him a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go out no more. I will write on him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, the new Jerusalem which comes down out of heaven from my God. I will write on him my new name. Now listen, so you're going to get his new name written on you. In other words, you will be labeled, you'll be acknowledged. Everybody with me? And you will be a, you'll be what? A pillar. Pillars in the temple of God and, and the name of Jerusalem will be on you. Number seven. Verse 21. <laughs> and to him overcomes, I will grant to sit with me on my throne as I also overcame and sat with my father on his throne. Oh, wonderful. So you'll sit with him on his throne. And the eighth one, which eight means new beginnings. Revelation 21 and verse 7. Are you all all right? Are you getting it? Revelation 21 verse 7. He who overcomes shall inherit all things and I'll be his God and he shall be my son. Look at verse 8. But the cowardly, unbelieving, abominable, murderous, sexual, immoral, sorcerers, that means addicted, Idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake of which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death, the one that we talked about already. So we see there are eight divine promises from God 
to those who overcome and are conquerors. Are you hearing? Now, the last one, it says, and he will inherit all things. He will inherit all things. And, and Tuesday, we're going to do a teaching on inherited birthright, which this is kind of like a continuation. We're going to do it. It's called inherited birthright. And I want to close at First John chapter 2. Is everybody there? Verse 15. Would you read it with me, please? Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world is passing away in the lust of it. But he who does the will of God abides forever. He who does the what? Will of God abides forever. So he who doesn't do the will of God does not abide forever. Arming yourselves. Take heed. Arm yourselves not only with the armor, but the mind of Christ, wisdom, and revelation. It's important. We do it every day. You ask and you receive. You learn how to fight. Deny yourself. Stay in the Spirit. Stay filled with the Spirit of God every day. Ask for that fresh oil. Times are getting rougher. There's more deception and more people falling left and right. This is still a lot of woe is me. Too much me. That's why people get offended very easy. That's too much me. Get rid of me. Get rid of me and walk in the truth. And the truth will make you free. Father, we thank you for your word this morning. We are honored and blessed. We acknowledge that your word is true. And will not return void. I apply the blood of Jesus in every seed that's been planted here today. I ask that you protect this seed and allow it to grow and bear fruit for your glory. As you prepare our hearts this morning to receive communion with you. In Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. Amen. Hallelujah.